طيب بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسوله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد تريد بإذن الله تعالى we on the sixth night sitting from the book of مجال الشهر رمضان وشيخ وثيمين رحم الله um, and today we're going to cover في أقسام الناس في السيام so the different types of people the categories of people uh, in regards to fasting so the Sheikh Rahmallah he begins with his uh, introduction again. He's going to the introduction now. So Bismillah. Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah Hilnazi at Qanabi Hikmatihi Ma Fatara wa Ma Bana. All praise and thanks are due to Allah, the one who perfected with his wisdom what he has created and built. وَالشَّرَعَ الشَّرَائِئَ رَحْمَةً وَحِكْمَةً طَرِيقًا وَسُنَنًا So then with his wisdom and mercy he placed the legislation in order that it would be a way of life for us. وَأَمَرَنَا بِطَاعَتَهِ لَا لِحَاجَتَهِ بَلْ لَنَا And he commanded with his obedience not for, for his need but for us. يغفر الذنوب لكل من تاب إلى ربه ودنا. So uh, Allah forgives, Allah forgives the sins. He forgives the sins of all uh, the ones who seek forgiveness, uh, repent to Allah, um, and uh, seek to be closer to Allah. Yeah. Then you So then he said, and he gives generosity to those who are kind and perform good deeds. So I Allah mentions in the Quran Wallahina so that's Surah Ankabut, where Allah mentions those who strive in our cause will guide them to our path, and in, indeed Allah is with the doers of good. Then the Shaykh mentions Ahmadahu ala fada ilihi sirran wa ala wa alanan. So he says, I praise him, yeah, I praise him, meaning Allah, for his. You know, bounties openly that the are openly secret, uh, secret and open, given in open. And he says, I praise him. فوق السماوات فدنا صلى الله عليه وعلى صحبه أبي بكر القائم للإبادة راضيا بالعنا الذي شرفه الله بقول بقوله إذا يقول لساهبه لا تحزن إن الله معنا so here one second so So you, uh, apologies. Uh, so we're going on to. One second. Bismillah. So then the sheikh. Let me just check. Bismillah. The settings are all good.
طَيِّبًا So then the Shaykh, he basically mentioned, I thank, yeah, I mentioned, I thank him for his bounties openly and secretly. Furthermore, I testify that none has a right to be worshipped but him alone. Um, without a partner, I testify that hope will grant me success to obtain the adorable bliss. Also, I testify that Muhammad is his slave, a messenger whom he raised up of the seven heavens. So, uh, and then he mentions, I'm closer to him. Peace be upon him and upon his companion Abu Bakr, the one who carried out the acts of worship and is pleased with the responsibility, the one who is honored by his Lord in his saying. And then we read up to here, which was when when he said to his companion, Be not sad, really, Allah, Allah is with us. That was Surah Tawbah. But Allah, Umar al 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 Mujadi fi the Hur al Islami Fama Daufa Wala Wana Wala Uthman al Lazi Radia Radia Bil Kadri Bil Kadri Wakad Halla Fil Fana il Fana Wala Ali al Karibi fin fin Nasab Wakad Nala al Muna Wala Sair Ali was Habi al Kiram Al Omana was Salam Taslima so one second so then the sheikh he mentioned that and upon umar the one who proclaimed his islam with dignity and integrity and upon uthman the one who was pleased with his lord's decree when the people sanctioned him to kill him and upon ali the one who is close to the prophet in kinship and has indeed achieved his goal may the peace and blessings of allah be upon the rest of the people's family the Prophet's family sorry, uh, and companions and whoever follows their footsteps on the day of judgment. So then uh, the Shaykh mentions, Ikhwani, my brothers, Sabaka fil majlis al thalith anna fard, uh, anna fard al siyam kana fi awwal amr ala marhalatain thumma istakarrat ahkam al siyami fa kana nas fiha aqsaman ashar. So he said, my dear brothers, uh, it is preceded us in the third gathering. So that was the gathering that Brother Sh uh, uh, Shaib did, uh, which will be on the channel, inshallah, uh, if you want to review that. That uh, fasting was obligated uh, in the first instance, uh, and, uh, in the first, and it was in two stages. So when it was obligated, it, was, it came down in two stages. And then it was um, it was established for us um, and it was stabilized for us uh, the rulings of uh, fasting so the the people in 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 regards to fasting they split up to into 10 categories so the sheikhs are going to mention that so al qism al awwal the first category al muslim al muslimu al baligu al aqilu al muqimu al qadir al salimu min al mawani so he said the first category is the Muslim. He's got to be a Muslim. He's got to be someone who's reached puberty. Yeah, He can be able to discern from right from wrong. Al-Aqilu. He's got to have intelligence. And he's got Al-Muqimu. Someone who's got to be a resident, not a traveler. And Al-Qadru. He's able to, tra uh, to fast. And Al-Salimu. Meaning he's healthy. He's not, he doesn't have anything that will prevent him from fasting. From any illness. Fayyajibu. عليه صوم رمضان أداء في وقته لدلالة الكتاب والسنة والإجماع على ذلك قال 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 الله تعالى شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه فيه القرآن خدا للناس وبينا بينات من الحدا والفرقان فمن شحد منكم الشحر الشحر فمن شحد منكم الشحر فليصبح so a Baqarah, wa qala Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, idha ra'aytum al-hilal fasumu muttafakun alayhi wa ajma' al-muslimuna ala wajub al-siyami ala wajub al-siyami ada'an ala man wa safna. So then the Shaykh, he says, um, um, so it's obligatory, he mentioned, so it's obligatory upon that person, upon the person to fast Ramadan 
you know, performing and fulfilling uh, the act in the right time. And the proof for that comes from the Quran and the Sunnah, and uh, and and you know the you know uh, and the you know you, uh, agreement upon that uh, by the salaf yeah, by by all the scholars al ijma consensus upon that. So the Most High said, uh, and I've just got the translation of uh, of that. Just bear with me. Let's see if I'm sharing the screen. Just bear with me. I think I'm not sharing the screen. So yeah, so you were here. So Barakulafik, Khunashaib. So the Quran ayah that we were reading here, uh, we we're reading Shahru Ramadan. So we said Shahru Ramadan from Surah Al-Baqarah. Um, now you get the yeah the month of Ramadan in which in which was revealed the Quran a guidance for mankind and clear clear proofs for the guidance of the uh, and the criterion between right and wrong so whoever of you cites the crescent on the first night of the month of Ramadan uh, he must observe fasting yeah? so he must as all fasting so that's where I go up to and the Prophet that was from proof from the Quran and the Prophet said if you see the Hilal the Crescent then fast and that's Muttafaqun Alay meaning Bukhari Muslim uh, I've mentioned that and then the all the Muslims have uh, you know unanimously agreed that it's obligatory for the person to fast you know fulfilling uh, the action of fasting Upon the wounds that we described in this category here, yeah, which was the wounds Muslim. If you go back here, the wounds Muslim, the one who's, uh, you know, reached puberty, he's intelligent, he's uh, a resident, he's not traveling, and he's able, and he's, uh, you know, healthy, he's not sick, he hasn't got a sickness that prevents him. Then the Sheikh goes, فَأَمَّا الْكَافِرُ فَلَا يَجِبُ عَلَيْهِ سِيَامُ وَلَا يَسْسِهُ مِنْهُ لِأَنَّهُ لَيْسَ أَحْلًا yeah. yeah, so wa in aslama fi athna'i yawm yawm fi athna'i yawm minhu minhu lazimahu imsaq baqiyat al baqiyat al yawm li'annahu sara min ahl al wujub hina isla hina islamihi wa la yalzimuhu qada'uhu li'annahu lam yakun min ahl al wujub hina hina waqt wujub al imsaq so here the sheikh mentions so as for a disbeliever, then it's not obligatory upon him to fast and it's not correct for him to fast because he's not for the people that are, you know, uh, required to fast and act out this form of worship. So if he accepts Islam during the month, during the month, uh, if he accepts Islam during the month of Ramadan, then it's not, it's not, it's not required for him to uh, make up the days that he uh, pre uh, preceded before he became a Muslim. He doesn't have to make those up. Because, and that is from uh, from Allah's uh, speech. Say to those who have disbelieved, if they cease from disbelief, the past will be forgiven. But if they return there too, uh, then the example of those punished before them have uh, have already preceded as a warning. So here, that's the proof that they don't need to uh, make up because their previous sins are forgiven. That was Surah Anfal. So if and if they accept Islam during the day of a fast, then it is not uh, binding upon them to uh, stop. Uh, so then it is sorry. So if they do accept Islam during the day, then it is binding upon them 
to not eat the rest of the day. So even though they didn't start the day with the fast, for example, at Suhu time, they didn't accept Islam. For example, it's come down to Zohar time. They've it's become a Muslim now and it's in the month of Ramadan. They should, yeah, is not eat for the remainder of the day uh, because he's from, he from the people who is obligatory upon uh, with his Islam. But it's not obligatory, it's not binding upon him to make up uh, the day because he wasn't from the people or that he was obligated uh, obligated upon uh, when the waqt of uh, you know the time of stopping eating meaning the suhoor he wasn't a Muslim then so he doesn't have to make up the fast but from because he is a uh, he's a Muslim now is he should you know uh, stay away from eating until uh, the time of iftar so that's the ruling for a person who becomes a Muslim at the time uh, during the day in Ramadan. Uh, then the Sheikh mentions the second type of people, a qism of Thani, a Sagiru Fala Yajibu Alayhi Siyam, Hatta Yabluga Likoli, Likoli Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Rufi Al Kalamu, Anta Lather, and a Naim, Hatta Yastakis, Wana Sagir, Hatta Yakbur, Wana Majnoon, Hatta Yufir. رواه أحمد وأبو دعود والنسائي وسحه الحاكم لكن يأمره وليه بصوم إذا أطاق إذا إذا أطاقه تمرين له على على الطاعة لي لي ليعلفها بعد بلوغه اقتداء بالسلف الصالح رضي الله عنهم قد قد كان الصحابة رضوان الله عليهم يسومون أولادهم وهم صغار ويذهبون إلى المسجد فيجعلون لهم اللعبة من الإحني يعني الصوف أو نحوه أو نحوه فإذا بكوا بكوا من فقط الطعام أو من فقط الطعام أعطوهم اللعبة so here the Sheikh he mentioned the second category of people. He said the 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 children, the children, uh, it's not obligatory upon them to fast until they reach the age of puberty. Yeah, until they reach the age of puberty, and that's according to the uh, you know the statement of the Prophet وسلم, that the pen has been lifted. From three three types of people, who are those three type people? Three 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 types of people: the one who's sleeping, meaning that, for example, that when you are asleep and you you know uh, you've missed a salah, for example, salatul fajr, the pen's been lifted. You know, it's not been written against you. Yeah. So the anaim, the one who's sleeping, until he wakes up, and from those uh, children. Uh, young children until they uh, until they uh, reach puberty and from uh, the insane person the one who's lose uh, lost the uh, his faculty of thought and process uh, until he regains that so whether he's a uh, mentally ill until he gets better or whether for example he's faint he's gone in a coma until he re regains consciousness so that's what the scholars mention about that them three categories and that was mentioned by Ahmed, Mam Ahmed bin Hanbal in his Musnad, and Abu Dawood, and he's mentioned, you know, from uh, one of the uh, six books, and then Nisa'i as well, and then uh, Al Hakim, he declared that to be Sahih, the hadith. But um, here the Sheikh mentions, even though they are young, they might be young, and we're not talking about 10 years old because a lot of the scholars mention here were that. You know, according to the hadith of Prophet Sallallahu command your children to pray at the age of seven, yeah, and beat them if they don't, uh, you know, pray at the age of ten. And that is a ruling that they should start praying from uh, age of ten. And a lot of the scholars mention if prayer is, you know, commanded for them on the age of ten as a wajib, then so is fasting. Yeah? So ten years old, they should be already fasting. But here the Sheikh he mentions that uh, you should. Like the guardian of the child should command the child with fasting if he's able as an exercise to get him used to 
uh, or the obedience, yeah. So that he gets accustomed to it uh, when he's, you know, when he's already uh, reached age of puberty, he's already accustomed to it. So that that he's following the way of the salaf, the righteous uh, salaf salih, the pious predecessors. May Allah be pleased with them. So here, I just want to stop there and say mention that a lot of people now. Uh, I experienced this when I came back uh, a few years from uh, ago in Egypt from my niece and nephews. Cause, because we, alhamdulillah, you know, even though our parents, whether they came from whichever Muslim land they came from, uh, they were, you know, they had that built into them that they tell the kid, children. So when we were having six, five, six years old, seven years old, oh, no, you're fasting half a day. You're fasting three quarters a day. To encourage them or even start fasting fully when they're six or seven. And that's what, what the sheikhs are talking about. And a lot of people, when I came back uh, around 2017 uh, to the UK uh, from Egypt, I seen that uh, my niece and nephews, they were being told by the schools at that time. They never said that when we were younger, but they were emboldened by the weakness of the Muslims. And they said, oh, no, you can't tell them this too long. The days are too long. No, Wallahi, if they can do that, let them fast them a few days. Oh, no, they shouldn't be fasting during school time. No, who are you? The, the parents are the one who decide whether the children fast or not. So, oh no, they're going to... And then, you know, even people who are reach puberty, subhanAllah, some people were saying, oh no, I can't fast because I got exam. Allah, if they knew the importance of fasting, it's a wajib. This is something that Allah respect, you know, uh, commanded for you. And a test, what is a test? Is that wajib? No, it isn't. You know, so these people, man, they've got their priorities all mixed up. But anyway, continuing, the Sheikh, uh, he said, uh, the Sahaba, may Allah be pleased with them, uh, used to command, you know, make their uh, children fast. Yeah, so they, they're talking about the ones that are below the age of puberty. So they were probably children of age of five, four, you know, subhanAllah, when they were small. Yeah, and they used to go to the masjid and they used to make for them, a, you know, a toy out of wool, yeah. So he, or something similar to that. So you can imagine children, probably at the age of four, maybe Allah alam if they were younger, yeah, or and above, that they used to get them uh, to fast to get experience that you know fasting and get them used to it. And then if they used to cry because of the loss of food, they would give him. Uh, uh, the toy, this toy uh, uh, of wool, to you know, to distract them and amuse them and entertain them with that, you know. So, alhamdulillah, look at that. Uh, they used to strive for the children to fast, and now, subhanallah, I've come across some individuals who are Muslim, and you know, Muslim, we say that you know, we don't make takfir on the people who don't, but there are, so many people don't fast. You know, we don't say, oh, you're not, a, you're not a Muslim now, you're a kafir. No, we present the proof to them that it's a wajib, you know, especially the salah. And then the song and everything follows on from that. You know, so uh, they don't fast. They're 20 years old, 18 years old, 17 years old, you know, 15 years old, and not fasting, subhanAllah. And they call themselves Muslim. We're living this strange time, I understand, where kids are, so why? Because the sheikhs are going to come and mention it, and I'll give some more detail. So, وَكَثِيرٌ مِّنَ الْأَوْلِيَاءَ الْيَوْمِ يَغْفَلُونَ أَنْ هَذَا الْأَمْرِ وَلَا يَأْمَرُونَ أَوْلَادَهُمْ بِالسِّيَامِ بَلْ إِنْ إِنَّ بَعْدَهُمْ يَمْنَعُ أَوْلَادَهُ مِنَ السِّيَامِ مَا رَغْبَةَ مَا رَغْبَتَهُمْ مَا رَغْبَتِهِمْ فِيهِ يَزْعُمُ أَنَّ ذَلِكَ رَحْمَةٌ بِهِمْ وَالْحَقِيقَةُ أَنَّ رَحْمَتُهُمْ he <laughs> So here's the point that I want to mention. The Sheikh is going to mention, inshallah. So here the Sheikh, he mentions that many from the 
guardians, it means the parents and the people who are uh, responsible for their children, today are you know neg negligent here yeah, about uh, about the affair of commanding the children with fasting. Rather, uh, some of them forbid the children from fasting here. Yeah. Uh, even though the children are desiring of fasting, they uh, they 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 forbid them from that. You know, claiming that uh, that is a mercy from them. Subhanallah, and I've had that with certain family members as well, where we say, "Oh, let them fast," and give example of other righteous brothers and sisters who have encouraged the children to fast at the age, whether it's six or seven, even if it's a half day. Initially, if they can complete that go on to a complete day, you know, type of thing. Um, and uh, they said, no, no, they're oppressing them. We not show mercy to them. No, it's not mercy. And the reality, the Sheikh said, the, is that the mercy mercy to them is by establishing the wajib, yeah, which is to cultivate them upon the, uh, you know, the rituals and the way the uh, of Islam and uh, to educate them which is this precious education you know this is this uh, you know uh, practice for them and uh, mashallah you know when I uh, when we had that I want to fast we had that competition between siblings as well so this is the thing that you want to try to invoke in the and uh, you know try to implant in the hearts of the children so whoever forbids them from that yeah so whoever forbids them from the act of uh, obedience, so this is a worship, a great form of worship, is uh, to fast, yeah, and to neglect uh, this act of worship, then he uh, he is the one who's an oppressor to them, and for himself is uh, also, you know, because when they grow up, they're not going to be, it's going to be difficult for them to fast, yeah, and they're not going to like to fast, it's going to be a burden for them, so now I'm, so if they do fast, uh, and so you, you, the sheikh mentioned now, if the children do fast, you know, the younger age, and then you see that there's some harm upon them because of the fast, then there's no problem, yeah? If you uh, tell them, okay, now stop uh, at that time and give them food and say, look, no, no, you've done enough, yeah? So uh, that's what the sheikh is saying. So, uh, some people, you don't want to even attempt that. وَيَخْسَلُ بَلُوبَ الذَّكَرْ بِوَاحِدٍ مِنْ أَمُورُ ثَلَاثَ So then the Shaykh, he said that uh, uh, um, a boy, he attains uh, maturity or uh, puberty uh, with one of the th one of the three uh, that we're going to mention. أَحَدُهَا إِنْزَالُ الْمَنِي مَنِي بِإِحْتِلَامْ وَغَيْرِهِ لِقَوْلِهِ تَعَالَى وَإِذَا بَلَغَ الْأَطْفَالُ مِنْكُمْ الْحُلْمَ فَلْيَسْتَعْذِنُوا كما كما استعذنا كما كما استعذنا الذين من قبلهم هذا سورة النور. so وقوله صلى الله عليه وسلم غسل الجمعة واجب على كل محتلم متفق عليه. so then the sheikh he mentions رحمه الله دا in the Quran دا one of the signs of a, a boy reaching puberty is a wet dream. Yeah. So the, uh, that is uh, according to the statement of Allah. Uh, and when the children among you come to puberty, puberty, then let them also ask for permission as those senior to them in age. Thus Allah makes Allah uh, makes clear his ayah, uh, commandments and legal obligations for you. Uh, and Allah is all knowing and all wise. So, what does it mean by ask permission? Meaning for entering into women, you know, like into the places of women. So, uh, before puberty, you know, there's not much of a you know issue. But after the puberty as well, they need to ask permission. Uh, and um, so here, the, the last one is um, having a wet dream. And the Prophet has some said uh, in a hadith that uh, the you know, the ghusl, the bathing of Jum'ah is obli obligatory upon every one who's uh, every uh, pubescent person who's your puberty. So uh, it's wajib upon that. That's, that's uh, agreed by 
Bukhari Muslim. Then the second, so that was the first one, wet dream. The second one is Nabatu Sha'ar al Anati, Wahua Sha'ar al Khashinu Yambutu, Hawl al Kobli, Nikoli Atai Atai Ataya al Kurudi, Radiallahu Anhu, Oridna al Anabi, Salallahu Ali Salam, Yomu Koredata, Famankana, Muhtaliman, O Ambatat Anatu Katala woman, La Turika. Rawahu Ahmad wa Nasa'i wa huwa sahih. And this is the hadith. Um, so he's mentioning the second uh, thing, uh, the second uh, condition for entering, uh, on the second one condition of entering into puberty for a boy is pub- pubic hair. Yeah, so pubic hair. And that is according to uh, the speech of uh, Ataya Kuradi, may Allah be pleased with him, who said that uh, we present it. So we present it. Uh, the uh, So we present it on the day of uh, the Battle of Koreida. So they were Koreida, Banu Koreida were uh, Jewish, were Jewish uh, tribe who uh, you know broke the uh, the contract with the Prophet ﷺ, the agreements, and uh, so therefore they were fought against. Yeah, they were fought against. So, so then the uh, sh- sh- the prophet he mentioned in the hadith. So whoever was uh, reached puberty or had you know pubic hair, they fought. Uh, but who didn't were left. They didn't. They didn't take part. Play. Uh, take part of the battle. And that's what I'm mentioned by Ahmed, Imam Ahmed wa Nisa'i, and his uh, Sahih hadith. Then the third. Uh, Condition for a boy to enter puberty is Blue Tamam Hamsa Ashara Salatan Likoli Likoli Abdullah bin Umar, the dear Law and Huma, Orita Orita Alanabi Yom Ahad, now Oritu Allah Alanabi Sasson, Yom Ahad Wana Wana Blue, Arba Ashara Salatan, Falam Yudzini. So here he said that I will present it myself to the Prophet to take ba- ba- uh, take place uh, the, in the Battle of Uhud. I want to take uh, he presented himself and I was 14 years old. Yeah and he did not permit me. Yeah. So Yani al Qital yeah so fighting. He didn't permit him. Uh, so then Zada al Bayhaqi wa Ibn Habban fi Sahihi be Sanat Sahi and uh, Bayhaqi and Ibn Habban on the mention uh, in the in the Sahih and with the correct chain Walam Yarani Walam Yarani Walam Yarani Balaktu Wa Aratu Alehi Yomal Handaki Waana Waana Blu Hamsa Asherat Sanatan Fa Ajazani so Zad al Behiki wa Ibn Hibban fi Sahihi be Sanat Sahih wa Raani Balakt or Balakt Rawahu al Jama Kala ibn Nafi Fa Kadim Fa Kadim tu Ala Umar ibn Abdul Aziz Wahu Khalifa Fahadatuhu Fahadatuhu al Hadith Fa Kala in Hadal in Hadal Had uh, بين الصغير والكبير وكتب ال uh, لي أماله أن uh, يرفدوا أن يفردوا نعم أن يفردوا يعني من من الأطاء uh, لمن uh, بلغ خمسة عشرة سنة رواه رواه البخاري. so here uh, the the mention in the another narration that uh, when the same Sahabi, when he was uh, presenting himself again, uh, when he was 15, on the Battle of Hunduk, yeah, of the Battle of Hunduk, um, and uh, the Prophet Sallallahu uh, permitted him to take part in the battle. So that was when he was uh, in when he was 15 years old. So uh, that was when he was 15 years old. So then, um, the Sheikh mentioned that um, also 
at the time, and then uh, that uh, you know there was consensus that Ibn Nafi, uh, he said that uh, I put forward to Umar bin Abdul Aziz, yeah. So he was a Khalifa, yeah. Uh, he was a ruler after um, the Sahaba, and uh, he was a righteous ruler. Uh, Umar bin Abdul Aziz and uh, so he basically mentioned to him that this was the limit between a, a, a child and a big person so if they have no sign so remember any one of these three we're not saying all three need to be present so whether a person has a wet dream whether, uh, sorry, a boy has a wet dream whether he has what, uh, pubic hair or he reaches age of 15 so if he doesn't have a wet dream uh, uh, and pubic hair, age of 15 yeah, uh, so then he wrote, uh, he said he wrote Abdul Aziz wrote to his, the, the people who was working for him that they make obligatory, uh, the, the, uh, the you know, that they know that, uh, the 15 that 15 is the age of uh, um, of, of uh, puberty. Um, um, Bukhari mentioned that as well. So, they, so he informed his, uh, you know, laborers to give every fifteen-year-old his share. Yeah. Um, so uh, when he was giving out um, whatever he was giving out of food. Um, so anyway, uh, the, then the sheikh. So here, the fifteen age. We're not going according to the Gregorian calendar, the solar calendar. We're going according to the lunar calendar. Remember, there's ten or eleven days short every year. So when a person, when a child is 14 and a few months, he's actually 15 years old. Yeah. So, وَيَحْصُلُ بَلُوغُ الْأُنْثَى بِمَا يَحْصُلُ بِهِ بَلُوغَ الذَّكَرِ وَزِيَادَةُ أَمْرٍ رَابِعِ وَهُوَ الْحَيْدِ فَمَتَى حَادَتْ الْأُنْثَى فَقَدْ بَلَغَتْ وَيَجْرِي عَلَيْهَا قَلْمُ التَّكْلِيفِ وَإِنْ لَمْ تَبْلُغْ أَشْرَ سِنِينَ وَإِذَا حَسَلَ الْبَلُوغُ أَثْنَى in Har Ramadan, for in Kanamin Man Balaga, Saiman Atama, Saumahu, Wala Shay and Alehi, for in Kana Mufatteran, Lazimahu Imsak, Imsako Bakiati Yomihi, the end of Musara Min Ahlel Wujub, Wala Yalzimhu Kadauhu, the end of Lam Yakun Min Ahlel Wujub, Hina Wujubil Imsak. So here the Sheikh in incense, so that was for a boy, now for a girl. All the three conditions. So any one of them three, a wet dream, yeah, because women also have that, and that's come from a narration of the Prophet as I mentioned. Uh, and uh, one of the mother of the believers was surprised when a mother, asked, uh, when a woman asked, and she said about a wet, in concerning wet dream, said, "Do women have wet dream?" And then the Prophet as I mentioned in the Arif meaning of the Hadith was that the son he takes after the mother. So yeah. So uh, yeah, a, a, a boy and a girl can have wet dreams. So um, or pubic uh, pubic hair, or um, you know, age of fifteen. Uh, but here, there's another um, condition he mentioned for the woman is uh, menstruation. Uh, so so here, uh, when a woman has uh, when a girl has menstruated. Uh, she has attained puberty, uh, and then she, uh, so, so then, uh, therefore, when a woman sees blood, she has reached puberty. Her pen of, of accountability will start running, even if it's before the age of ten. As remember, we see the kuffar, uh, you know, who tried to uh, cast doubts in, uh, in the believing people and the Muslims and this especially about the age of Aisha radiallahu anha and the marriage and saying that oh no she was six when she was engaged to the Prophet and the nine was when the marriage you contributed how is that and all this and you know she actually mentioned that she went through puberty so it shows you that puberty can take place before 10 and that person that that is a woman and we even know if you ask our grandparents when they got married, like, you know, I asked one of our grandparents and they were married when uh, they were like 12, 13. And if you go further back, you know, we're talking about the 1400 years. And if it was a summer thing that it was some Abe or something that was, uh, you know, looked down upon, the Jews and the, you know, pagan Meccans and 
would have attacked the Prophet some on that, but no one did it because it was the norm at that time. So, um, so yeah. Anyway, uh, so even if she before the age of uh, ten, then she is uh, uh, reached puberty. And if uh, a child, whether it's a boy or a girl, reaches puberty during the day of Ramadan, then uh, and if he's already fasting, so alhamdulillah, that you know, practice. We mentioned the Sheikh saying you should be uh, getting them to practice fasting even before they reach puberty. Then if they're already fasting, then he completes his uh, fast and there's nothing upon him, and he's completed his uh, you know wajib upon him. But if he was not fasting. Yeah, and he was eating, and then he reached puberty, or she reached puberty. Then it's obligatory upon them to stop eating for the remaining of the day, because now he become it's become wajib upon them to fast. So, uh, and it is not uh, you know abiding upon them to make up uh, any fast before that time, because it only became wajib upon them at that particular time. So then the Sheikh mentioned the third type of uh, uh, category of people. Uh, Fasting is al majnoon, uh, the one who has uh, lost his intellect, yeah? uh, a, a person who's insane. Who a faqid al aqli, fala yajibu alayhi siyam. So he's the one who's lost his intelligence and it's not obligatory upon him to uh, fast. Lama sabaka min qawli nabi sallam, rufi aqalam an al thalatha al hadith. So according to what is preceded from the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi that we mentioned, that the pen is lifted from three. وَلَا يَسِحُ مِنَ الصِّيَامِ لِأَنَّهُ لَيْسَ لَهُ أَقْلٌ يَأْقِلُ لَهُ يَأْقِلُ بِهِ الْإِبَادَةَ وَيَنْوِيهَا والعبادة لا تصح إلا بالنية لقول النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إنما الأعمال بالنيات وإنما لكل من إما نوى فإن كان يجن يجن أحيانا ويفيق أحيانا لازمه الصيام في حال إفاقته دون حال جنونه وإن جن في أثناء النحار لم يبطل صومه كما لو أغمي عليه بمرض أو غيره لأنه نوى الصوم وهو آقل بنية صحيحة <clears throat> ولا دليل على بطلان خصوصا إذا كان معلوما أن الجنون ينتابه في في ساعات معينة وعلى هذا فلا يلزم يلزم قضاء اليوم اليوم الذي حصل فيه الجنون وإذا أفاق المجنون أثناء النحار رمضان لازمه إمساق بقية يومه لأنه صار من أحلى الوجوب ولا يلزمه قداؤه كالسبي إذا بلغ والكافر إذا أسلم. So then the Sheikh mentions in regards to the one who's uh, uh, you know become mental or become insane. He said it is not correct uh, for him to fast because he is not the one who has intelligence and can't discern. Uh, about his worship, and he can't make an intention for it, and or and worship uh, is not is not correct except it has an intention in accordance with the uh, the speech of the Prophet ﷺ. Indeed, actions are by the intentions, and the, indeed, everyone uh, will get what they intend. Yeah. So uh, so if a person, uh, so if he's uh, you know he's He's um, he's um, lost his intelligence sometimes, and then he regains it sometimes. Then it's obligatory for him to fast in the time when he regains his intelligence, uh, and not in the time when he is mentally ill. So whether that person is controlling it with medication, and there's issues of like. Uh, uh, bipolar and all the different uh, spectrums of mental illness. Wallahu alam. Uh, I don't have a speciality in understanding that, but uh, the people who can manage their uh, illness with, uh, you know, medication, and as long as they take the medication before fasting, then and that will help them fast. Then alhamdulillah. And then if the person, the sheikh goes, if he, if he, if he is, uh, you know. Mentally uh, not there during the day, 
then uh, you know his fast is not uh, nullified, yeah, because uh, you know the same way. For example, he made the niya at the beginning, then he bec he his illness, you know, afflicted him during the day. Uh, it does it doesn't nullify his fast. The same way a person, for example, if he was to faint, yeah, because uh, because of an illness, you know, whether he's uh, epilepsy or whatever else or other than that uh, because he's intended the fast and he's he was intelligent at that time yeah and he was correct his near was correct uh, and there is no proof on the nullification uh, or specifically nullifying if uh, if it is known that uh, the person uh, you know he he, he he sometimes you know he he, he loses intelligence and he gains it at other times, uh, you know, particular times. So there is no proof from the Sharia that he nullifies his fast. So even, for example, a person, he started his fast and he was sane, and then he had the near, then he lost, you know, uh, because of his illness during the day, and then his fast is still valid as long as he doesn't eat. Yeah. Well, Allah, so the, so the, for upon this reason, for, for this reason, it's not binding to make up uh, the day uh, where he uh, had this affliction occur of uh, his mental illness, he loses his faculties. And if he does regain uh, his, uh, for, you know, his faculties from his, uh, uh, you know, in, uh, mental illness or, you know, his loss of, uh, uh, you know, mental acu acuity uh, the, during the day, then he, uh, he, he should fulfill the fast so if he regains his uh, intelligence, then he should complete his fast uh, for the day and it will be counted for him. Then because he becomes one of the people who is uh, obligatory upon uh, and is not uh, binding upon him to uh, make up any fast where this happens. Uh, like, uh, like a person, like a young, uh, it's the, uh, the same ruling for a child. If he uh, attains puberty or a kafir when he becomes a Muslim, he doesn't have to make the wounds that he's missed before it. So then, um, I hope that was clear. Uh, and then the fourth category, so we mentioned already the person was mentally not there. And then the, uh, the fourth category is a scene. Al-harimu al-ladhi balaga al-hadiyana wa saqata al-tamizu fa la yajibu alayhi siyamu wa la al-it'amu anhu al-saqut al-taklif anhu bi zawala tamizihi fa ashbahu al-sabiyya so then he said a senile person you know a person who got old age and whether it's alzheimer's or dementia or any other form uh, where he cannot di distinguish between right and wrong uh, then it is not obligatory for him to fast and he doesn't need to feed the people as well so some conditions are going to realize where the if they don't need to fast but they need to feed people for every day then because that that you know that a responsibility uh, upon him has fallen from him because he the person can't differentiate between right and wrong so he becomes like a, a child yeah before he can distinguish before he reaches the puberty and if he can distinguish sometimes uh, and then sometimes he can't so then it's upon him to wajib alayhi sawm fi hal tamiz duna hal hadiyanihi wa salatu kasawmi so basically the Sheikh is saying that if he, if he sometimes like he gets consciousness and he's there and he's got all his uh, you know mental faculties with him and then sometimes he loses it so when at the time of uh, you know when he, he's having it then it's a wajib for him to fast yeah like it's wajib for him to pray but when he's lost it uh, then it's not wajib for him to pray or to uh, fast. So some people have that where they come and go. Uh, so when he, when they when they so yeah. So that's the ruling for that person, senile and dementia, you know, um, and uh, you know Alzheimer's type of thing. And then the fifth category, al qism of khamis, al ajizu an siyam, ajzan mustamiran la yurja zawaluhu. كالكبير كالكبير والمريض مرضا لا يرجى 
برؤه كصاحب سرطان ونحوه فلا يجب عليه الصيام لأنه لا يستطيع وقد قال الله سبحانه فاتقوا الله ما استطعتم وقال لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها لكن يجب عليه أن يطعم بدل الصيام عن كل يوم يوم مسكينا لأن الله سبحانه جعل الإطعام معادلا للصيام حين كان التحذير بينهما أول ما فرد الصيام فتعين أن يكون بدلا عن الصيام عند الأجزي عنه لأنه معادله So then the Sheikh he mentions the fifth category is the one who is in a state of long term like disability yeah? and is not able to fast because of that reason so uh, for example a person who's fragile and old yeah he can't maybe he you know he uh, he can't because of his diabetes you know it's so severe you can't handle it you know whatever other you know he needs medication all the time so you can't do it uh, or a person for example um, who's got cancer you know so they can't uh, fast so then it's not upon them to fast uh, because he's not able and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he mentioned in the ayah in the Quran ayah let's see uh, in surah yeah so keep uh, keep your duty to Allah and fear him as much as you can so that is it your ability among to Allah doesn't test as person more than they can buy yeah? uh, so you well and then uh, Allah said la yukallifu Allahu nafsan illa wus'aha yeah so here uh, then uh, Allah mentions uh, that Allah bird is not a person beyond his scope. Yeah, that's what Baqarah, yeah. So only upon the person's ability. But it is an ability upon him to feed, uh, a, you know, feed the uh, people, poor people. So it's, a, uh, uh, you know, so it's ability upon uh, him to daily uh, feed the people daily for in, a, in, in place of his fasting. Uh, for every day which they miss and this is because Allah has made feeding a replacement for fasting and gave the believers the option of either fasting or feeding uh, when fasting uh, when it was first legislated therefore if you are unable to fast uh, you should uh, you know ransom your day of fasting by feeding a poor, a poor person so these people with this certain type of illnesses they can't fast what they're going to do they're going to feed the people each day but what was the other one the senile the person with the dementia they don't feed no person yeah while these people uh, uh because of illness you know weakness they still have their mental uh, faculties so they what they feed a person for every day to make up for that uh and then uh, uh then the the sheikh the kaizan he says um ويخير في الإطعام بين أن يفرقه حبا على مساقين لكل واحد مد مد من البر ربع الصاع النبوي ووزنه أي المد نص الكيلو وعشرة غرامات بالبر الرزين الجيد وبين وبين أن يصلح طعاما فيدعو إليه مساكين بقدر الأيام التي عليه قال البخاري رحم الله وأما الشيخ القبير إذا لم لم يطقي الصيام لم يطقي الصيام فقد أطعم أنس بعدما كبر أنس وقد أطعم أنس بعدما كبر آم أو آمين كل يوم مسكينا خبز ولحما وعفطر و 
وقال 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 ابن عباس رضي الله عنهما في الشيخ القبيل والمرأة الكبيرة لا يستطيعان أن يصوما فيطعمان مكان كل يوم مسكينا رواه البخاري So here uh, the sheikh he mentions uh, so here a person he given the choice or we are giving each uh, or per, a poor person a mud so a mud as we know as well when you're giving a um, zakat al fitr is uh, basically you both your hands together and it's can it, some people say it can go up to like um uh, you know like uh how would you say here so a mud uh so it's both hands together uh you'd give that much uh which is uh of grains which is uh one fourth of a sa the sa is also a measurement which is approximately 510 grams of barley yeah um so so it's basically uh mud is uh roughly they're saying uh mentioned is like 750 milliliters of a container if you were to fill it up with rice dates beans soup lentils you know uh so you know this it might vary but that's the amount they should get give every day so um so is so so or you can cook the food and invite poor people according to the number of days that you have not fasted yet so al uh, imam bukhari mentioned that uh may allah be pleased with him uh, said the old person who cannot fast must feed the poor for uh indeed anas bin malik may allah be pleased with him, uh, continue to uh feed a poor person each day for a year or two when he grew old and was not able to fast he fed them bread and meat so that was mentioned by bukhari imam bukhari so then the sheikh mentions ikhwani ashar ashar hikmatun min al min allah ta'ala wa rahmatun rahma allah bihi ibadahu li'annahu shar'un mabniyun ala tashil wa rahma wa ala al-itqan wa al-hikma اوجب الله به على كل واحد من المكلفين ما يناسب حاله ليقوم كل كل احد بما عليه منشرحا به صدره ومطمئنة به نفسه يرضى بالله ربا وبالاسلام دينا وبمحمد صلى الله عليه وسلم فاحمدوا الله ايها المؤمنون على هذا الدين القيم وعلى ما انعم به عليكم من هدايتكم له وقد ضل عنه كثير من الناس واسالوه ان يثبتكم عليه الى الممات so the sheikh says oh my brothers the the, the sharia of allah the legislation of allah there's wisdom from allah in there the most high and a mercy uh, that allah has uh, you know uh, you know, shown mercy to his slaves because he's uh, legislated. You know this, uh, this, um, this, uh, this, um, this Sharia is based on uh, ease and mercy, and upon uh, perfection and wisdom. So Allah obligated uh, this upon everyone from the one those people who are responsible yeah so those people who are have remember we said who are intelligent who are you know the pens not being lifted they are muslim yeah so whatever so so whatever is suitable to their condition they should establish all of the acts of worship that they have uh, that they can't you know so whatever is suitable for them you know that, that every uh, you know, actually carried out, and that this their uh, chest, you know, uh, how do you say, they, 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 they have an open heart with this, and the chest is filled uh, with ease, and they have uh, that tranquility in themselves uh, that they can carry out these actions, and uh, uh, 
Um, yeah. So uh, and while being pleased with Allah as His Lord, so you be pleased with Allah as Lord and with Islam as your religion and with Muhammad as your Prophet. Yeah, and um, praising Allah uh, uh, and praise Allah uh, or believers uh, upon this religion, this value and precious religion, uh, and upon the great blessings that Allah has, uh, you know, blessed us, uh, blessed us. You know, as all with uh, from guidance uh, to uh, to to Allah uh, and many people have been misguided from this path uh, and uh, we ask Allah that and he uh, you know he uh, keeps us firm um, upon uh, this religion upon this path until we die then he then he said uh, the Sheikh said um, Allahumma inna nas'aluka bi an bi anna nashhadu annaka anta anta Allahu la ilaha illa ant al ahadu as samadu allazi lam yalid wa lam yulad wa lam yakun lahu kufuwan ahad ya dhal jalali wal ikram ya mannan ya badi as samawati wal ard ya hayyu ya qayyum nas'aluka an tuwaffaq nam an tuwaffaqna lima tuhibbu wa tarda وأن تجعلنا ممن ممن رضي بك ربا والإسلام دينا وبمحمد صلى الله عليه وسلم نبيا صلى الله عليه وسلم ونسأل الله ونسألك أن أن تثبتنا على ذلك إلى الممات وأن أن تغفر لنا الخطايا والسيئات وأن تح أن تح تحب لنا منك رحمة إنك أنت أنت الوحاب وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وآله وصحبه وأتباعه إلى يوم الدين. So the Sheikh mentions, Oh Allah, let's go through this. Oh Allah, um, uh, we bear witness to you that you alone and none none other has the right to be worshipped, but you alone, the only one, the self-sufficient. Who begets not and is not begotten, and there is nothing comparable comparable to him. Uh, you are the owner of the uh, owner of might and bounty. You are the most bounteous. You are the decorer of the heavens and the earth. You are the ever be uh, the ever living, the self sufficient. We are asking you to grant us um, success uh, and uh, to obtain. Your love and pleasure, and to make us amongst those who are pleased with you as their Lord, with uh, Al Islam, the religion of Islam as our religion, and with Muhammad as the Prophet. And we ask you to keep us firm upon that until death, to forgive us, uh, to forgive us, to forgive us our sins and our shortcomings, and to uh, bestow and to bestow upon us your uh, mercy for verily you are the giver uh, may peace and blessings of Allah uh, be upon our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam his family members his companions and whoever follows their footsteps until the day of ju- judgment uh, with that inshallah we finish subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik shadu wa la ilaha illa ant astaghfiruka wa atubu alaik barakallahu feekum barakallahu barakallahu